I have not found anything in my entire life that helps me stay focused and retain more information than just trust me, it works. Today, I'm gonna teach you how to read faster, how to learn faster, and how to actually process more knowledge so that you retain it better. I promise you, this is just stuff that I've been using for years. All of these things work, and these are just some little tips, secrets, things that I picked up along the way to help me learn and grow. And what we're gonna talk about first is reading. Now, I'll be 100% honest with you. I don't enjoy reading at all. I'm gonna tell you that. I've read hundreds of books, I don't enjoy it. I'm not a fan of reading. I'd rather watch something on YouTube. That's more of my thing. But I love learning more than I hate reading. Let me say that again. I love learning more than I hate reading. Therefore, I force myself to read anyways. But along the way, I have developed some hacks to help me read a little bit quicker, a little bit better, and also help me retain my information even more. One of the best things that I have found, I'm, a, I'm definitely a physical book, like a physical copy book person. Like I love to hold, I love to feel the pages. But when I went and traveled for six months, I had to use a Kindle because there was no other option that I had. I had to use a Kindle. And when I started using a Kindle, I realized, holy crap, there's some really big benefits to using Kindle besides the fact that you have an infinite amount of books sitting inside of your pocket. One of the biggest things that I found is that when you download Kindle, one of the best things that you can do, and I recommend everybody have a Kindle or use your iPhone. You can get the Kindle app on your iPhone. It's absolutely free. You could do it on your Samsung. So literally you all have a Kindle at this point in time in your pocket. Uh, you can buy a Kindle. You can buy whatever it is that you need to. I use my iPad. But one of the cool things is when you buy a Kindle book, almost every time when you're checking out on Amazon, there's a little button down below and almost nobody knows that, is, that this exists. And it says, add audible narration and it's usually like $7.49. Audible narration is the audiobook version of it. So number one, I'm gonna teach you a little hack to save you money. One of those hacks is that you could go and a lot of times buy the audiobook for like 30 bucks, or you could buy the Kindle with the audiobook for like 19 a lot of times. That's pretty damn amazing if you ask me, you get to save money. But one of the best things about it is this, is when you download a Kindle book with the actual narration, is it will actually read it out loud to you. And it's a, there's a thing called whisper sync where it will actually highlight and show you what words it's on. So literally all you have to do is just literally look at the page and see it start to highlight everything. The reason why this is a benefit is because you can actually speed it up to three times the speed. And now humans can learn and listen four times faster than they can speak. So you can learn four times faster, you can listen four times faster than you can speak. And so when you're listening to me being like, okay, how would I listen to a book at three times the speed? Well, you have to start to get used to it, but you can at least listen to it at two times the speed. As you get better, you listen to it at three times the speed. So there's a couple different things. Number one, you can, you can speed it up and go two to three times the pace, which is great. You can hear it a lot faster than, than you can read. Um, and the other thing about it as well is that you retain information more when you do it this way. Why? Because when you're just physically reading a book, you are just reading a book. You are just seeing that book. But when you have a Kindle, and I'm not sponsored by Kindle, they should freaking sponsor me from all of this promotion I'm about to do for them, right? Uh, they Audible should sponsor me for this. But when you read a Kindle, what happens is you're actually reading it, which means you're seeing it, and you're hearing it as your, you know, which means that the sound's coming through. So instead of using just one of your senses, you're actually using two of your senses. Now, a little hack that a lot of people don't know is that if you're moving around as you're learning, you're actually learning and retaining more information. So number one, you can read it. Number two, you can hear it at the same time. And if you actually stand up and walk around and pace back and forth, they've actually done studies on people, you retain more information if you're pacing back and forth. Why? Because it's using another part of your brain that's feeling. When you're walking and your feet are physically moving, there's actual feeling that's happening there. So it's stimulating parts of your brain. So you're getting three out of your five senses stimulated by doing it this way. So what is that hap helping you do? It's helping you learn and retain this information. So you can read it 
If you have the Kindle with the auto audio, you can listen to it. And at the same time, you can walk from pace around. So you're actually, you know, moving and that movement is causing feeling. So you're bringing in three out of your five senses. I think we have five senses. I'm pretty sure we do, right? We don't have a six. Some of you guys might have, might have some six senses out there. Um, but, you know, you might be out there and you're like, okay, so this sounds really good. What are some tips as far as how long I should do this for? Well, if you guys have been following me for a while, you know that I love the Pomodoro technique. I have not found anything in my entire life that helps me stay focused and retain more information than the Pomodoro technique. The Pomodoro technique is where you take 25 minutes and you just focus, or 20 minutes and you just focus on one thing. 20 minutes on, five minutes off. 20 minutes on, five minutes off. And so if you have an hour to spend, maybe you're gonna read for an hour in your morning routine. What's the secret to doing it? 25 minutes of reading, walking back and forth, pacing. This is exactly how I like to learn. You can walk back and forth, you can pace, you can listen to the book, you can read it at the same time. You're getting all this bit of information. And after 20 minutes, you have a you know timer go ding, it goes off. What do you do? You take a five minute break. One way that you actually retain information better is if you start to do a physical activity after learning. And so maybe you do some push-ups for five minutes. Maybe you do some jumping jacks. Maybe you go for a quick jog. Maybe you do some yoga, some stretching, whatever it is. But what happens is you're fully into it and then you're fully out of that learning, which, you know, in neuroplasticity, they find that when you're fully in something and you're fully out is the best way to learn because you trigger the actual changes in your brain while it's on, but the actual change in your brain don't occur until you're in deep rest or doing something completely opposite from being that completely focused on what it is. Um, don't need to dive deeper into that. I could go and geek out completely on neuroplasticity and how that works in your brain, but just trust me, it works. And so what you do is you do the Pomodoro technique. Another thing that I find really, really helps me out, retain information and also use it later on is one of the features that's inside of Kindle. If I should freaking be sponsored by Kindle, this is ridiculous. <laughs> you can you can take Kindle and you can actually highlight and save the highlights. So if I see a part of Kindle that I like, like a, a three sentences, I can highlight those three sentences, which is what I really loved about physical books is I always underline everything. And then one of the things that I do that I really, one of, one of the things that really was one of my main resistance for not leaving physical copy books and going to Kindle. I didn't know Kindle could do this. I can underline all of them and then I can make notes as well, which is what I do. I like to underline it and then write down whatever pops into my head as to why I underlined it, how that relates in my life, how I could turn, you know, this paragraph that I just found into an actual podcast episode to help all of you guys out. And so the cool thing about it is that I can highlight inside of Kindle and then I can actually put the notes in and take notes as to why I highlighted that, how that relates to me and what I can use that for in my life. It's just an added benefit, which is amazing. What makes it really cool is this. Now, if you finish a book, like let's say you read Think and Grow Rich, my favorite book, right? You read Think and Grow Rich, you have a bunch of highlights, you have a bunch of notes. And you know, you're not walking around with that physical copy. I hope you know, that'd be kind of weird if you're just walking around your entire life with that physical copy. But there's a lot of times where instead of going onto Instagram, let's say I'm in the doctor's office and I have to wait for 30 minutes at the dentist, right? Like I, I went to the dentist not too long ago. I had to wait for like 20 minutes. What I'd usually do is instead of going onto Instagram, since I have my phone in my pocket, I will go back and reread books that I've already read by reading all of the highlights and reading all of my notes to remind myself of things that I learned in that book. So instead of me wasting my time 25 minutes on Instagram and seeing what everybody's doing on Instagram and comparing myself to other people and you know all of that stuff, I can literally use those 25 minutes for my personal development because the app is already on my phone. How amazing is that? I don't have to bring anything extra with me. I don't have to walk around the physical copy. I don't have to have, you know, a Kindle paper white and you know, the actual thing itself. I don't have to have my iPad with me. I literally, if I highlight something on my Kindle app on my iPad, it's automatically highlighted in my phone when I go and look at it next time. So what's cool about it is that you can always bring these books with you no matter where you go. It's always inside of your pocket. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, do me a favor and hit that like button down below. It helps with the YouTube algorithm so that more people can see this message because it helps us get it out organically. So hit that like button and I appreciate you.
What's next? What's one of the best ways to learn something to deepen your knowledge after you go through and you read these things? The very best thing to do is to teach somebody. Teach somebody what you just learned in your own words. And here's the reason why. Teaching your brain makes it go from learning to implementing. In implementing and actually, the thing about implementing is it makes your brain create new neurosynaptic connections. So neurons that fire together, wire together, if you're creating new connections in your brain, you're hardwiring that learning inside of your brain. What this does is it takes your passive learning, which is just sitting there and reading and learning, and turns it into active learning. And everything that I do, Every course that I do, every time I teach something is I always try to teach it and then give somebody an assignment to make it active learning. And the reason why is because you are 10 times more likely to remember that information that you learned if you go and you actually turn it into active learning instead of just passive learning. This is one of the reasons why one of the worst ways to learn is to actually, which is funny because this is how most of our schools are built, is to just sit there and listen to somebody talk to you. That's passive. One of the best ways to do it is active. That's one of the reasons why walking around also helps you out as well because you're, you're more active. Your brain is more stimulated. So if you learn something that's really great, the best thing to do is to call up one of your friends and just talk to them about it. Hey, dude, I just learned this thing that I think would be really interesting to you. My girlfriend and my best friend, I do this all day, every day with them. Anytime I learn something, especially really complex things for me, is I have to teach it immediately. And the reason why I have to teach it immediately is because sometimes I lose it. Like the, the thing that I'm thinking and the thing that I'm seeing in my head and the pieces that I'm trying to put together, if I speak about it and I try to teach what I just learned to them, it usually makes it easier, number one, for me to make the connections, for me to understand it, but it's also making real, actual connections in my brain, which makes me 10 times more likely to remember it. That's pretty freaking awesome if you write, if you, if you ask me. If you have no one around, let's say you call your best friend, you call your girlfriend, no one else is around. What you then do is since you can't teach it to somebody, write it down with pen and paper and teach it to yourself because you're still actually going from passive to active. And when you teach it to yourself, number one, you're always gonna have those notes now. You can take a picture of it. If it's, you know, whatever it is you're doing, write it down with pen and paper. Don't type it out because you're more likely to remember when you write it down. So if there's nobody else around, you don't have an excuse. You're still with yourself. You can still take your time and write out and teach yourself, teach yourself what it is that you just learned, you're making new connections inside of your brain. There's almost no excuse as to why you can't learn nowadays. Let's say, and I wanna, I wanna take a step back, and some people that are out there, you're like, wow, that sounds really nice. I love to have a Kindle. I would love to have, you know, be able to buy books. I would love to be able to afford the book and the audiobook, and yada, 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 and excuse, 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 whatever, right? Here's the best thing about it. If you are the brokest person and somehow you just happen to be listening to this podcast and you're, you're learning this information, there are many apps that you can use that actually allow you to download free audiobooks from your local library. What? Yes free audiobooks from your local library. One of them is called uh, Overdrive. There's a few other ones you can Google them. I can't remember the names off the top of my head, but you can literally download free audiobooks. Another way that you could do this as well is let's say that you download a free audiobook for Think and Grow Rich. You can then go to your local library, find Think and Grow Rich, and you can listen to it as you're reading it and it costs you no money. There's no excuse to not learn in this day and age. Let's say that you don't have, let's say you have a physical copy of Think and Grow Rich, but you can't find the audiobook of Think and Grow Rich on Overdrive. No worries, I got an extra solution for you. Go to YouTube and type in Think and Grow Rich audiobook. 95% of the time, the book that you're looking for is on, the audiobook that you're looking for is on YouTube. You can listen to it absolutely free. Absolutely free, cost you nothing. The cool thing about it is you can speed it up to 2x on the speed on YouTube as well. So there's literally no excuse to not learn, to not get better, to not retain more. There's no excuse that you have. The real question is, are you actually going to make yourself and force yourself to learn? You know, anything that you ever want to learn is at your fingertips. 
that's what's so freaking cool. You can take your phone and anything that you want to learn is literally sitting at your fingertips. That is one of the biggest benefits to being alive right now. Every bit of information that's ever been known to humankind is basically at your fingertips right now. It's in your freaking pocket. If you're taking a dump, you can literally pull up and learn something instead of scrolling through Instagram. You can learn anytime that you want to. How incredible is that? And I'm going to leave you with, with a quote that really puts this into place. And Mark Twain says, there is the, the man who does not read has no advantage over the man who cannot read. Both of them lead to ignorance. So if you can read, but you're not reading and you're not accumulating knowledge, you're not trying to get better, it makes you know better. There is no advantage to know the person who cannot read because of issues that they might have, right? Everybody has the opportunity to learn. Everybody has the opportunity to grow. We live in a place, a, a world that is so incredible. And if you turn on the TV or you look on Instagram, you look on Facebook, it looks like the world's burning down. It's not. We live in an incredible time. You just have to search and see how incredible it is and open your eyes to it. One of the things that makes it so incredible is that every bit of information that you could ever want is literally at your fingertips. There is no excuse for you to not learn. There is no excuse for you to not get better. There is no excuse for you to not grow every single day into the best version of yourself. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. Is this not mind blowing to you? Like to me, this is mind blowing. I can actually literally change my brain. This isn't some woo woo BS. This is actual real science called neuroplasticity.